Hello friends and welcome to a replay analysis. This time we're doing something a little new for the channel. A carry game has been sent in. Position 1 Weaver. So this is Ancient 2. I mean I just look at what you guys send in. So let's take a look. I know this is mostly a support channel but I know many of you also play some core roles too because you know you don't have to be just a support player. If you are, I don't blame you if you want to move on. I will say though guys, I am not a huge core player, so I probably can't help with too many Weaver specific things. But in terms of like game plan, map movement, maybe some carry specific things, because this is Ancient 2, so I think I can probably help a little bit there. Um, you know, so it's just not, you know, if you got like BSJ to review this, I'm sure you'd have a lot of specific, what are you doing with this creep aggro, last hitting, farming pattern stuff. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what we get here, guys. Um, item wise, let's start there. I think most of this is okay. I don't think you need two sets of tangos though. So let's take a look at who who you're laning against. It's kind of vague. Anti mage though, probably the carry. So let's let's get rid of him. Position five, pub game. I don't know, hoodwink or techies, I guess. Maybe the tiny. But in terms of off laners, if I had to guess, it's probably one of these three: techies, pango, or tiny. And the other is the four. So I feel like you're probably against some combination of these three heroes. What does that mean for your itemization? You against two melee cores and your arranged hero, Weaver, with Shikuchi, you're probably not going to take that much harass. Uh, just, it's just the way the matchup works. Maybe Techies pokes you a little bit, but Techies has no damage. Uh, so... If you do need more regen, you can buy more regen. But I think one tango will be enough. The other reason I, I'm like specifically pointing it out is because not only are you not going to take a lot of harass, if they go on you, it's going to be a huge burst of damage at one time. So it might be tiny level two. It might be techies suicide into a bomb. It's going to be pango trying to swashbuckle, hit you with a ton of damage, and then like disarm you, right-click trade, maybe. Or he's probably just using it to secure elastics and poke you away a little bit. But either way, we don't even know if Pango's here. He could be mid. So I'm worried about some combination of burst damage on you. Not consistent harassed, burst damage. So the items you want to buy then are things that increase your health pool so you can survive the burst or to quickly heal up after that. So like a salve. So looks like you guys lost some gold. I don't know what happened. Um, but you're, I think if you hadn't lost gold, you would be able to trade one of these tangos for a salve. And I think that would be safe because if your techie suicides on you, you can then salve up and heal and be ready to play the lane. You can buy another set of tangos in the meantime. Let's speed up. Falcon Blade queued up. I think you do want to finish the, the headband first. Um, You maybe could have tried to steal their rune. You've got Shikuchi. You're extremely safe. Just a thought. Uh-oh. I don't know if you wanted to aggro the creeps down into the tower. I feel like you were trying to harass and accidentally aggro them in. It does mean your lane's going to push. Kind of not ideal when you think about who you're against. Um, Because there's no reason. Like, Okay, so it is Teggy's Pango. Pango's a weak laner, so there's no reason to give him a lot of stuff. So you do want to be careful about pushing. It does look like he's going to end up kind of de-pushing for you. Your Shikuchi there should have gone further a little bit. This thing lasts four seconds. So you were trying to, and then you turned around. But I don't think there's a reason to. You can still hit them. Maybe hit one of them and then back off. Because look, you get all the way back here before the invis fades. So I think you can easily hit him and then come back. And like maybe the invis fades here. But it doesn't matter. You still built up some distance. All right. Laning. It looks like he did buy something. I'm going to assume it's the headband recipe. Yeah, so there's another case. You're just using Shikuchi and you run back. Like, this is 100 damage level 1. 75 when you factor in the magic resist. So definitely get in your chip damage. Poke, uh, poke at least one of them, if not two, depending how they're positioned. It is free damage. Not free. You already used mana for it. But if you're going to use mana, you might as well get the most out of your mana. So there, that's better. You hit the, the pango, and then you probably could have made your way over to the techies. 
Okay, he did get the headband. All good. In this case, he didn't. They didn't end up using like suicide. I, I don't know. That doesn't seem like the way techies should be. When I feel pressured by a techies four, it's because they have suicide. Um, but I guess I'm not a techies player, so I don't know the <laughs> the ins and outs of it. Uh, but it looks like you don't need the salve so far. But notice you also didn't need the other set of tangos. You're still not there yet. So I think the safer play definitely would have been to get like a salve or um, maybe even a fairy fire. That's 85 burst heal. So if you see the suicide coming in, you pop the fairy fire. You also, you know, two extra damage on a on a carry. Never, never a miss in the laning stage. So I think that uh, second set of tangos could definitely have been something else. To help out your laning stage a bit more in this game not getting punished for it in the future could be mm, kind of like this fluffy hat purchase first just because of what we've been talking about being worried about the the burst damage killing you i'm uh 125 what about just a second wraith ban i guess that's like way less huh 40 what about a wand 60 plus charges um Maybe. Well, I guess you already have the two iron branches, so really it's only 20 extra health. Yeah, maybe Fluffy Hat's fine. Although at this point, he hasn't used Suicide at all, so maybe like maybe you don't have to be worried about the burst damage. Like It seems to be how he's playing. Alright. How are your last hits doing? I, I have seen you miss some last hits. I'm not going to nitpick it too much, because obviously you know... You should get the last hits. Bounty runes coming up. When bounty runes come up, I'm depending on the game, I'm kind of okay with uh, carries shoving in the lane a bit. So actually, this is kind of working out here, this timing. So see this? Uh, actually, the next wave is here and yours isn't here. So actually, if you'd shoved this sooner, I kind of would have liked it more. Because you see how it's out here? Pango. Okay, let's see. Look at the time. Eight seconds. Walks here, gets this last hit. Walks over here, grabs the rune, comes back here. Maybe he missed one creep, and it's not such a big deal. If you had pushed this lane sooner so that these creeps go under the tower and then maybe meet the creep wave here, he's now under this choice where he, he stays here and gets like three creeps, let's say. Or he walks to this bounty rune, and in that time, those three creeps die to the tower and the enemy creeps. So, depending where your lane's positioned and what heroes you're playing, in this case, I think this would have been a great time for you as Weaver to shove the lane in and then go help your team secure secure these runes. Um, plus, having these creeps go into the tower would help to fix your equilibrium a bit, and it would stay up here a little longer, but then ultimately push back down, and I think you, you like that as Weaver. So I think that could have been a play you think about here. Getting some mines. Nice. He's mine. So because you didn't end up shoving it in, the lane does end up staying out here, which is pretty good for Pango. Like we said, he's a weak laner. So he's kind of getting a lot out of this lane, I feel like. He's the same level as you. I don't think that needed to happen. Close. I think this could have been a decent magic stick lane. By the way, Pango casts Washbuckle a decent amount. Uh, you like the charges. Same idea, the burst heal, mana efficiency for you on Weaver. I think stick's pretty good for Weaver. Alright, lane pushing back in. Let's speed through this. Uh, actually, it looks like double kill. Nice. Alright, let me see what you do. I think this is a great time to shove the lane in while they're dead. Because you're pushing anyways, you can't really fix it. Uh, they're going to kind of respawn in time. That's unfortunate. Oh, you got to be really careful. Ooh, scaring me, dude. I sure hope you have some regen on the way. I don't even know if I'd walk over here. This is a little scary. Well, I guess not too bad. Okay, you did get the south. You should definitely swap these out. Go back to, like, back up a bit to be safer. Make sure your south doesn't get canceled. Swap these out. This salve's only gonna heal you up to like here now. Because you kept your stat items in. Yeah, so look, it's like you salved. I know you took a bit of damage from that engagement right there, 
But even if you hadn't, you would still only be at like mm, two thirds at most, let's say. Um, but I think it would have been less. I think it would have been a little more than half, really. Um, and do you feel that safe with that much health? You know, against the techies, maybe take a stray mind hit into a suicide into swashbuckle that actually kills you. So you really need to keep up as full health as possible in this lane. So absolutely make use of this efficiency trick where you backpack some of these items. It looks like you might be able to pick up this pango kill here. Ooh, there's that stick. Stick's good item. Nice. Okay. Oh, I had a free career. Oh, feels great. You do need a bit of regen. Um, I'm curious if you're going to get a salve or like a tango. I like this jungling while you're scared. Looks like you did get another salve. All right. So see... You stop here. I mean, this is pretty healthy, uh, you know, but you actually could be like full health right now if you backpacked these and then put them back in. Because if you remove this, that's 175 health and this is uh, 40 health. So let's just round it to 200. You subtract 200 from here. So you're sitting at max health 800. The salve heals. Um, the salve heals 400. So the salve definitely heals you halfway. And then you add in an extra 100 by swapping these back in. Um, and then, of course, you have these, like, iron branches, so you can even get, like, a little more. You could probably even round this up to, like, 300 extra health. Um, well, actually, that's too much, but you get the idea. You're missing some extra health, which, if you had just quickly backpack swap this, takes... You may not be in the habit of it. Go into an empty lobby. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Oh, I can't do it. So drag this down. Click it again. Swap here. So this puts the Wraith Band in the backpack. Put it puts it here this swaps them so now falcon blades in the backpack this is under the cooldown so it's still fine it doesn't have to be in your backpack it just has to be on cooldown you swap falcon blade back in they're both on cooldown for six seconds the salve is eight seconds or the uh, the salve is 10 seconds now isn't it um yeah 10 seconds um so the salve heals you for so actually you probably do want to leave these in the backpack for a little bit so four seconds and then swap them back in um but if you, because you don't have enough backpack slots for like these branches too, you could like swap them in and out a couple times. Only takes like a second to do. Sit in an empty lobby, practice swapping it to get in the habit of it. You would get extra heal out of that cell. All right. So far, you're doing really well in this lane, though. I would say, maybe not really well, but pretty well. You're pretty happy because you got those kills. Your lane equilibrium could have been better. It you, you played far up here quite a lot. Um, part of that we can say is due to pulls. Part of that comes from having the creeps go into the tower at the very start of the laning stage. Anti mages here. Um, Techies kill? Okay. Oh, but you get killed in the mines. Um, unfortunate. I wouldn't have expected it, I guess, either. Um, I think you probably could have gotten a little more out of this lane. If you uh, had done some of the stuff we talked about, but overall you're in a good spot for the game where this is Ancient 2. Of course, there are going to be like some inefficiencies. So all in all, good spot. All right, you're going for Maelstrom. Maelstrom's really popular on Weaver right now. I don't think it's the item this game. Look at, uh, look at who you're playing against. Playing against uh, Anti Mage and a Pango. Actually, hang on. Let's take a look at this fight. So SF came here. All right, gonna pick up a kill. Oh, maybe two. All right, pretty good for your team. Um, so look at who you're playing against. Anti Mage has Magic Resistance. So a Maelstrom's a bit of a farming item, but also a damage item. And you're just going to straight up do less damage to an anti-mage than you would to many other heroes in the game. Pango also has spell immunity in his ultimate. And I mean, he's not always going to be ulted, but when he is, you're not, you're not just not doing anything to him. So the Maelstrom has lost some value this game. What is really good against anti-mage is physical damage because the guy is built to go against uh, magic. <laughs> it's kind of his thing. Look at your team. You actually have a team pretty solid for physical damage. This guy has an aura. 
to reduce armor. This guy does like the cleave damage stuff. Um, you have some natural synergy with the, the swarm. So I think this could be a really good game to go for a Adesso. Um, Cause I think you actually just win this late game. I know there's a techies, which is kind of scary, but we reverse anti-mage. I'm pretty sure favors you, especially if you have any kind of initiation first, which here team's a little lacking on that front against an anti-mage, um, but you could get Abyssal later. So I think you shred the guy if he's affected by presence of the Dark Lord, Deso, and maybe the Swarm, and you just outman fight him. Um, but you can't really do that with the Maelstrom. And then when this guy's like rolling around, you, you just kill him because he, he still takes physical damage. So I think this is a good Deso game. And then Weaver, only scared of dying. Like Weaver's ult makes it hard to kill him. And Shikuchi, also hard to kill him. So he's just worried about getting chain stunned. And do they have chain stuns this game? Kinda. Avalanche Toss, Alt, the, uh, I don't even know what it's called yet, Bushwhack. The Root, you can still get out of, but it does set up the other stuff if you're like, oh, maybe I'll be fine in the Root. Uh, and then that's scary. And then Anti-Mage, you know he's going to get an Abyssal, which includes Bashes. So you do have the risk of getting Chain Stunned this game. Um, so BKB, sure. Uh, but I think this also could be a good SNY game. Because you do, so not only do you want the status resistance from SNY, but also the extra strength to survive Techie's Mine explosions. Because as long as you live, you're back to full health with time lapse. So any items that give you some health would be really solid. So I'm kind of envisioning like a, so Deso instead of this Maelstrom into, depending on the state of the game, you could go SNY or BKB next. And then if you go BKB first maybe you skip sny but maybe you just get sny after this is where like i'm not a carry player so i'm not fully sure um scotty also could be good a lot of health in that item and decent damage though i guess anti-mage can blink around um so technically gleepner could fulfill a lot of things you need because you do need some catch for like anti-mage but i don't think gleepner is that good against anti-mage because it is uh, a six thousand gold item and by the time you get it i mean if you rushed it first you probably do get it before he gets manta because you're having a decent game but like maybe you get a kill with it or two and then he gets the manta and then it doesn't matter like then the gleep nurse not that much damage against him and the roots not that important against him so i'd rather you go deso which will have late game value against him because he doesn't like the negative armor and then and then buy like abyssal to kill him or like have more control um what else could you buy I mean, actually, I, I think that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of it. I kind of like that. So like Deso, BKB, um, Deso, BKB, Abyssal. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Deso, SNY, BKB, Abyssal. There you go. That's like all your slots. I think that sounds really good. I think you have a really hard di time dying after that. Your alt, um, maybe for the reduced cooldown could be nice if you get the, the scepter. But maybe you also just get a lot of Roshans and then you don't need it. And then later, if you want like a Daedalus, that scales really well with the other items you've already purchased. All right, so that's that's itemization out of the way. Let's see when you finish this Maelstrom, because uh, your Deso timing would be pretty good this game. All right, we've left the laning stage, so it becomes a lot more important to like try to keep an eye on the minimap. I'm telling this to the viewers, but also myself, because I have a bad habit of just watching what you do on the uh, screen and replays. But all the decision making, that'll come from watching the minimap. So right now I see a huge fight bottom. I can't tell what you're looking at, but you need to do two things here. So one, you push the lane in. So this is great. Two, you do need to click here, at least a little bit. So observing it with your eyes is great, but like click in, what is their health? Because in this replay, we can see up here what people's health are. But down here, are they really healthy? Are they not? Is this a fight you want to TP into? You don't know because you're not looking yet. So you do want to poke your eyes down here, take a look, see what's happening. And continue to push. You know, so just like A click down the lane. So let's see. I'm you right now, right? I'm playing Weaver. Um, so over here. Now, now it's a little scary because there's a tiny here, but he's only level eight. You're probably fine. So you A click here and then, oh, okay, let's go see what's here. So I see this guy. Oh, he's a little low, maybe. 
Maybe if it pushes up, I can teleport. I don't see the others right now. Oh, this guy's a little low. Let's pretend we have like all vision or something. Um, and then you just click your hero button. Oh, I can't do it in replays. Hero button back here. Oh, tiny's here. Okay, so now you're going to need to pay a little attention here and maybe just look at the mini map, but know that their health can't suddenly change usually. Um, maybe, depending on their items. But now you know, okay, they're roughly half health in like five seconds, probably still around half health. And so now you can pay a bit more attention to what you're doing here, but also keep glancing to see if the fight's like moving to your tower or something like that. All right, I saw Anti-Mage sort of making his way here. Oh, he's just gonna show. I, I was gonna say, you might wanna be a little careful of like uh, going uphill because you could be tiny comboed into an Anti-Mage. I don't think he has enough time to mana burn everything. But the toss avalanche auto attacks into the mana void, maybe that's enough to kill you. Could be a little scary. But just be a little careful. Right, you're backing up because you're a little scared. It's fine. Let's keep an eye on the stack timing here. Excellent. I think you could have gone straight to the rune, but um, I'm so glad you stacked. And now pushing out the lane too, because you saw Tiny teleport away. I think this is good. The stack will be there. Oh, be a little careful of it getting stolen, but as long as you're watching the minimap, you can kind of see. Like, the only hero who's going to steal it is probably the anti mage. Uh, so, as long as you can, like, kind of see where anti mage is, you're good. Uh, I guess you can't see that he's down there, but, like, right now you have, like, a bunch of heroes here, so you're kind of knowing that uh, he didn't. Go for it. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. So you finish the Maelstrom. Okay, where are we? We're at 16 minutes. Let's go back a little bit. When would you get the Maelstrom? Okay, Maelstrom's on its way here. So 14 minutes. Um, Deso is 800 gold more expensive than the Maelstrom. So let's say that's like two minutes of farming. So let's say... Um, so now, actually, let's perfect timing. Let's jump back to uh, 16 minutes. You actually ended up getting a kill, so actually you're way ahead. So maybe it only would have taken you one minute to finish the Deso. But let's take a look at enemy armor. Deso would give you minus six. So Tiny, he's sitting at 12. So that's actually pretty decent for this uh, part of the game because of his ultimate. But he doesn't, like, he probably won't buy too many armor items. So it's like a static amount of armor with his ult. He doesn't scale very well. <laughs> he doesn't scale at all because he has zero agility gain. Um, so... Yeah, 22 armor later in the game. That's pretty, like, it's pretty decent. Minusing 6 from that um, is still okay. Plus the the swarm and your SF. Like, it'll get down there. So it'll always be kind of nice against Tiny. Let's take a look at uh, Hoodwink. Oh, she's got a surprising amount. Two Wraith Bands, good agility growth. So she's sitting at 16 armor. So you could bring that down to 10, which would be about 10% uh, less physical resistance, I think. Probably sitting around, like, 40%. Uh, maybe one of these other okay so perfect am's at 39 percent, and he has 10 armor so you would do 11 percent more damage to hoodwink am is at 10 armor so you would actually bring him down to four which is like 20 percent physical resistance around there i think um so you're doing 20 percent more damage to anti-mage instead of a maelstrom which is doing reduced damage to his magic resist um pango 10 armor oh and we already looked at tiny oh we're techies and techies 10 armor so 10 armor plus the swarm plus right now it's only at level two five armor reduction but eventually it'll be at seven so it's like seven plus six 13 plus whatever the swarm gives maybe you pick up a neutral item um that's a lot of negative armor it means your team is pretty much doing pure damage to these guys if not more so i think deso would have been really nice here maelstrom in general good item but against anti-mage he's really weak to physical damage all right, your team's all bottom, so be careful about showing right now. Because if the enemy team wants to make a movement, what's easier? Go on the four people or go on the one guy? And the one guy is a carry who's really good to kill. So anytime your team makes a group movement, you want to be a little careful. Looks like you are being careful now. Is that stack still here? Perfect. This is... Okay, you have absolutely nothing to do here. Let's watch, watch this. Watch this. We'll do this in real time, okay? All right. I know for a fact you're just going to sit here and auto-attack them for 10 seconds. 
So auto attack, whatever. Like, hit the big creep, right? If you want to kill him first, hit the big creep. Oh, wait. Let me switch to your, your team's vision. Okay. Hit the big creep right now. Let's see. Anti-mage. Okay. Pango. Here's his status. Uh-oh. Suicide got used. What am I doing? All right. Still, like, a couple more seconds on that. Pango TPing somewhere. Interesting. Good to know. Oh, Techie's kill down here. AM hoodwink. Do I want to TP here? Still farming. Okay. What else? Anti-mage just use ult. Do I want to fight? Tiny now showing top. We're collecting a lot of information while you're just... Okay. Now I'm back to my hero. Now click, click, click. Gonna go fight top. Right? That was a lot of time to collect information. So anytime you're doing a stack as a carry, just A click and start looking around the map. So like right now, why aren't you defending top? This hard camp or this ancient camp will be here for another minute. And if you as long as you clear it in that next minute, it'll respawn and you're fine. You know what's dying right now? Are these creeps and your tower's taking damage. So you should be defending this tower right now. This is like something that could wait. Nice drops. All right. Do you see how many creeps just died empty to this tower while you're standing right next to it? This. Okay. Each creep is worth like 30, 40-ish. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that creep wave is actually worth as much as your farming right here, if not a little bit more. So if you had to choose one or the other, they're about the same. But why not choose both? These guys will be here for a minute. These guys are gone in 30 seconds. So you have to come get this. This is a pretty big mistake. This is this is like a carry just being AFK, not contributing to the team. It's like, dude, you're right next to the tower. Please defend the tower. You're still getting gold. Like, contribute to the team. You know, this is like AFK farming kind of deal. Easy to slip into. I do it all the time. Um, but this is where, like, I think you would know to do this if you were watching the minimap while you're farming that ancient stack and you see, oh, Tiny's pushing in top. I better get ready to make my way over there. Right here? Another perfect chance. A click? A click? Oh, who's this guy here? Oh, Anti Mage is here? Interesting. Oh, it looks like they're smoked. Oh, just kidding. Pango just showed up. Okay. Two heroes here. Who's mid? Hoodwink? Okay. And then that creep wave's dead. Now you move over here. Um. Nice. SF kill. Back to here. Um, you know, you don't have to be that extreme. You don't have to spend like 20 seconds away from your hero. But you should have an easier time than I do because you should have a button to instantly go back to your hero that I don't in the replays. So it's like click. Okay, click back. Click, click back. Things like that. Really quick information gathering. All right. You poked your head into anti-mage and got a little scared because you're sitting at um, like half. So you're back to jungling. You're going for BKB, so what that tells me is your team wants to be active. I don't know if you guys are communicating or what, but that's what should happen. Because otherwise, like, I don't know. BKB is like two purposes. One, because you need to fight. Or two, they keep running at you and killing you, and you need the BKB to dissuade that. Um, but so far, we've seen you, like, have the freest time of your life, so you know they're not going for you. So it's not that second purpose. So... Unless your team's gonna fight here, uh, you don't really need the BKB next. And you could probably go for like an SNY instead, which helps you farm a little faster than a BKB would. Plus it's still like decent for fighting. Uh, so let's see. Poke in here a bit. You guys can do Roshan whenever you want. So as soon as you get a, a decent kill and you have a sentry to check, for um, Techie's Mines, you could do Rosh. All right, so you're going for a Daedalus, but I mean, you've got a BKB and you've got a Maelstrom. Your crits will be like, okay, but like the Daedalus doesn't scale that well with a Maelstrom. And then, you know, BKB doesn't give that much damage either. Plus you have this Imp Claw, which is already giving you some crit, which isn't as much as a Daedalus, of course. But, you know, I'm just like, let's think, like, look at, look at the enemy lineup. What's the issue with killing them? It's, it's damage, of course. But then lockdown, you've got like an anti-mage, a pango, a uh, techies who will always suicide unless he's stunned or silenced. So, I feel like you're adding in this Daedalus as more damage, but it doesn't even synergize that well with like Maelstrom BKB. 
and it doesn't solve the fact that this guy's always going to blink away from you because you don't have the best stuns on your team. Um, so I feel like the SNY is a little better. Even though, okay, it sounds weird, guys. I know. SNY is better, though, because this is what I think. Again, not a core player, but from my high and mighty position, I feel like Daedalus gives no stats. So you're still weak to getting burst down and killed. You have a BKB, but you might just run into bombs, right? You have no idea. Are you going to BKB everywhere you go? No, it's not It's not even possible. So you just need a lot of health so that Techie's Mines are less likely to kill you, could still kill you. Um, but imagine you run over a mine, and then this guy blink, avalanche, toss, bombs. Can you BKB in time? Maybe. But you know what would help? SNY. Plus, it would reduce the fact that you get chain stunned by some of these guys and give you a chance to, like, spam this ult. Like, oh, God, time lapse. Please. I just took, like, 6,000 damage all at once. Um, so I think the SNY is really good. It gives you some damage, gives you some farming, helps you passively survive against mines, and gives you that status resistance. Uh, and it's got better synergy with what you've bought, I feel like. Though, again, I think Dessa would be better. I don't know. Maybe this is the build that other people are doing. But I feel like it's not. From my non-core playing perspective, <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's not what you need this game. You see how you almost died there? It doesn't matter how much damage you do. You just get killed by a techie mine. Team pushing bot. I mean, you're not worried about the enemy taking Roshan, but I do think you are missing an opportunity to be in this top half and get Roshan. I kind of missed. I was I was ranting about the item, so I kind of missed if you had an opportunity in the last minute or two. Um, but Swarm plus SF passive is his aura is pretty much a free Roshan. All right. Information gathering, what's happening bottom? Do you need to run over right now and ignore this camp and simply sprint over? All right, now you're gathering information. But this is like a couple seconds too late. In this case, it looks like it's fine, but it could have mattered. And it'll definitely matter the higher up you go. Oh, it's close. What's this guy got? Not a lot of stat items. I was going to see if he built stat items. I think this is a great time to go Roshan. I wouldn't even care about this tower. Actually, it's a little little low on time. Ah, so maybe the tower is fine. All right, next fight, when we're closer to Roshan. This is why I said like it's better to be near the top half, but I guess you guys got two towers. So that's kind of good. All right, next fight, you could do Roshan. Maybe you can even just do Roshan, as long as you see like one or two of them somewhere else, and you have decent vision, and one person stands to break smoke, you could probably just do Roshan. Taking all the towers, I guess I don't mind this either, but before you guys go high ground, I better see a Roshan. Alright, good vision up here. Alright, nice, walking in. Okay, perfect. I cannot believe you guys are doing this without a sentry, though. Um... I don't know, was it checked earlier and I missed it? But how can you guys do Roshan without a sentry against the techies is so scary. Even if it's not enough mines to kill you, it's just vision so they know you're doing Roshan and could react. And that's scary. Okay, we got Aegis though. You guys bungle this up though because there's 25 minutes left in this game despite being 15k up at uh, 26 minutes. So let's see what happens. Oh! Okay. We got creeps mid. Let's go. What are we doing here? Why are you why are you looking why are you looking up here? Just hit this. Push this in here. Look, anti mage is splitting splitting you guys. You have limited time here. One guy can cut these creeps. Specifically, this guy currently cutting the creeps. So you guys don't need to be up here. This should be pushing into their base already. This guy this guy's dead. We're wasting time. We gotta get going. Anti mage, the longer we like leave him alone, scary. Probably fortify those creeps once you hear the mine go off. Because uh, once this... I um, How do I say this? You just lost your window. 
This mine just killed your window. You have... Unless someone's going to tank this tower for you guys, which is a little scary against the techies, um, maybe Ogre could do it. And, of course, it's never ideal to have to tank the tower, but if someone has to do it, you do have 15 seconds to hit this um, while back door is down. But, I mean, that's how you open yourself up to risk, right? Instead of everyone hitting this at full health, you're, like, taking turns tanking the tower and you're dropping down. That's, like, when the enemy starts to get a chance to kill you guys. And you have to wait until this next creep wave shows up. So this creep wave dying to the bomb is a really big deal because it buys enough time for Pango to not have to buy back. So let's see what happens. SF just, like, bought or, like, blinked into here. So uh, let's watch your perspective. Okay. Yeah, there are those mines we talk about. Another thing, someone, you have to ask a support to do it. Um, remind them if they're not doing it. And if they, like, definitely aren't doing it, buy your own. You've got to have a sentry to spot those mines. That mine wasn't even under a sign. Uh, thank goodness Kunkka was so tanky. Still ended up dying because Tiny comes in. So that's a kill that was totally avoidable. Or death, sorry. Totally avoidable death. All right, but now you know there are no mines here. It's very unlikely there are any more mines here. So you guys should just stand on opposite sides of each other and hit this tower. You see how you're like, ah, oh, we don't have vision because all the creeps are dead? Where's the last creep wave? Oh, killed by this mine right here. Yeah, fortify one of these creep waves. <laughs> if not the first one, which had a better opportunity because Bango was dead, then the second one here to now hit it while they're both temporarily dead. But honestly, your window is here is not as good, right? Because the, the Kunk is dead. So the first opportunity, let's go back to that. Went back too far. Ah, we went back too far again. All right, we'll go back like this. All right, so imagine you guys, instead of doing this right now, you're pushing this. So this is under the tower right now. Someone drops a sentry here. So you kill this off. You see like 50 mines here. Instantly start hitting them. Um, I wouldn't preemptively fortify, I think. I think killing off the mines is worth it. Um, if because I don't know these green mines are here. When I know the when I hear that they're about to die to this mine, I'd probably fortify that. But if I had a sentry down first and I saw all these mines, I would not, and I would just clear these mines and take that as a win, um, because this is like a minute of Techie's times. So if he has to if he has to detonate all these mines because you're killing them, then that opens up the next creep wave to be a push because you know he won't be able to place enough mines again um, and your sentry's there to, like, remove them. So this is more than a minute. This is a... Uh... Actually, I don't know how many is here. How many? I'm having trouble selecting them. Um, but still, you know, it wastes a lot of his time if you kill these mines off, so that's kind of worth one creep wave. But, like, uh, imagine we had the sentry down, so now we spend this first creep wave one, you kill this thing, and then you kill these, and then then you're ready to push. You don't waste this time. Like, this guy dies. He didn't need to die. And what that means is that this creep wave gets here. You've got five heroes alive. Probably four, right? Tiny probably wouldn't have gone in if those mines didn't go off. But the mines have been cleared from the last wave, which means now we, we are here with five heroes and an Aegis, while Pango is still dead for 12 seconds and no mines. SF stands here. Weaver stands here. You both just auto attack this. Uh, and if someone, if you see techies throwing a mine to kill off the creeps, maybe you fortify it. I'll leave it up to you guys. Maybe you just use a pipe to um, absorb most of the explosion. But I think this, this high ground push could definitely have killed this tower. Are you bloodlusted? Why is this ogre not bloodlusting people? Oh, the SF is bloodlusted. You next? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, Ogre. All right, but now you've been repelled. So, it's time to get out of here. Kunkka's dead. Just come back with Kunkka in a couple seconds. All right. <laughs> this is a big misplay, my man. Let's see how it works out. Some kills. 
Lost Aegis had to BKB. Tango buyback. SF. Looks like he's dead. Tonka's now here. Almost got the anti mage. Didn't do too much damage to him because we have a maelstrom. All right. So I think this sequence of events could have been a set of racks with that Aegis, especially considering that uh, you're 15k up. So this is one big opportunity we have messed up. The biggest mi mistake you made there, so like individually, this is kind of like a team thing that I was explaining, but now individually to you, the biggest mistake you made was when Kunkka was dead. I don't know what you did. You like ran up here by yourself and just lost ages. There's no reason to do that. Um, the way this high ground push should work against techies is that you just keep pushing the wave in. You have a sentry down to check for mines and you're both ranged heroes. You just hit this tower and you make them blink out here to fight you guys. And then that's an easy egg, boat, all of that stuff. Um, by coming in here, you're like doing the reverse. You make your team run up here, which is opening up the risk of mines, even though you've like cleared some out. So you don't know because there can be mines back here. You clear the mines here. doesn't mean you've cleared the mines out here. Um, so by coming in here as a core, you're forcing your team to go to you. You're making it harder to get the egg, harder to get the boat, harder to get SF alt. And you're making it easier for a good pango alt to like bounce in here for, for all these like AOE spells to hit you. Um, whereas out here you force them to come out and it's like, it's better for you guys. You're farther away from potential mines. You, you make them use their mobility to come in. Whereas here you, you run into them, they just fight you. And when your team runs in, they blink out. And now your team's like way out of position and you're dead. So this was a really big mistake to run up here. I uh, definitely don't want to do that. And if you had the Deso, I think it would have been a lot more obvious to just hit the tower. All right. Time to sell these iron branches. They're just taking up slots. You're not going to build anything with them at this point. Imp Claw. You could probably look to replace Imp Claw now that you got the Daedalus. What's your team got? Uh, nothing quite yet. Okay, you might pick up another tier three that you want, so we'll see. Oh, not you. That would have been nice. Headband and this Quickening Charm's okay, uh, but not quite necessary. All right, with that Aegis down, <clears throat> so this is this is why it was such a big deal to lose that fight. Aegis being losing the Aegis there means the enemy team just got like that was pretty early in the Aegis's life, so that was like probably like six more minutes. Yeah, like let's just say okay, four minutes. Let's say. The enemy team now has four minutes because you guys don't really want to go high ground without Aegis against the techies. So you just gave the enemy four minutes of time with that mistake there. And 15, 16k up is going to mean less and less the more, the further along the game you are. Uh, especially once this AM gets an Abyssal. That's pretty scary. Oh, that's pretty good for you. God, this would have synergized well with Adesso. And then Abyssal would be really good here. Abyssal for the lockdown to kill some of these guys, if it's not clear. It helps you tank up a little bit, but also the the active to kill the Pango in his ultimate, or just start the kill on Anti-Mage so that... Um, like, this guy really struggles to get his stuff off, unless Anti-Mage screws up. Because even if he uses X, this guy has a B... He doesn't have a BKB yet. If the guy gets a BKB, which he should next, I would say, um, it pretty much becomes impossible to land this combo. But if you start with Abyssal, which is, which is, which is one and a half seconds, that leads into an Ogre Stun, which leads into the Torrent Boat combo, maybe the eggs going off. And in that time, SF could have channeled his ult to cause a fear. You see, there's like a lot of different potentials for like how this anti-mage dies. But without the Abyssal, who starts it? Maybe the Ogre. But it requires Ogre to walk up into a very short range and then blast the Anti-Mage, who should have the reaction time to press Counterspell. Uh, this is like Ancients and Divines in this game. So I feel like he should be able to Counterspell that. But Abyssal from a Weaver coming out of Invis, a lot harder to react to. And some would say cheating if he does, but, uh, you know, maybe not. Maybe it was just luck. <laughs> <laughs> so
so. Your ult costs no mana at the max level. So all you need to do is survive to kill it. So let's watch this again in slow motion. Abyssal. Look how close that was. The reason you died there is because the void stun came at right at the end and you were chain stunned long enough to die. If you had an SNY there, I guarantee you he screws that up or it's just simply not enough because you would have to mana stun sooner, which means you wouldn't have lost as much mana. And you probably just survive that. And then you press R or whatever your... I press V for time lapse. You press your ult and you survive this this fight right here. You wouldn't get chained up. And that's if you have an SNY. I don't know. <laughs> it was in my head. I don't know if I actually said it. But that's why the SNY status resistance is so, so good, I think, this game. Looks like we're losing this fight now. Oh, definitely. <laughs> And now it's kind of snowballing out of control because the the anti mage is scary now with his abyssal. That whole fight goes a little differently if you have the SNY and don't die there. I think. Not to put the pressure on you or anything, but you know, you know. You know. <laughs> Trouble brewing. All right. I don't know. Just sell these. <laughs> You're never going to use them again. Let's see when you sell them. All right. Game plan right now. Wait for Roshan. Yeah, someone should be pushing bottom. I don't know who. I wasn't paying attention when it started. If you run down there now, it's awkward. But maybe you should have identified that when you were leaving the base. I was looking at your item, so I missed what was happening. Speed through this a bit. Okay, so by the time you came down here, some of your team came, so now it's like we're overlapping in farm a little bit. Someone on your team probably needs a gem. No one's building Necro 3. Are they? <laughs> Doesn't look like it. I think someone needs a gem. Um, You're buying a Lincolns. I wasn't sure what this was for. Uh, it's like maybe Scotty? Looks like you're getting the Lincolns. The attributes are all right, right? 14 attributes, not too bad. Uh, but a bit expensive for 14 attributes, all things considered. Uh, HP regen, not really necessary. Mana regen, not hugely necessary at this point of the game. Um, so then this passive slash active, strictly for the Abyssal. You're just hoping the Abyssal to block the Abyssal, pretty much. I I don't know. You can still get chain stunned, right? You can still get hit with all this other stuff. Do you have a blink? No. Yeah, yeah. So you could still be like, uh, I don't know. There's still a world where you get chain stunned by abilities, and they can play around Lincolns as well. So I don't know. I think it's it feels okay, but I also think an SNY would still just be better than a Lincolns. Because the 1.5 second stun gets reduced to, uh, where is it? That's why. Reduced by 25%, right? So it's it's barely longer than a one second stun. Uh, and maybe he chain bashes after that, but those are reduced too. So the chance to time lapse just goes up a lot against all these like short stuns. They're all fairly short stuns. There's just a lot of them. This being, I think the longest stun, 2.2 seconds which is still not that long, down to like one and a half seconds when you get the yes and Y. It's kind of different against like a Bane because that's so long, right? Even if you reduce it, it's still enough time to get you killed. But this game is like a series of short stuns that chain stun you. And if you, you just make them screw up a little bit with the status resistance, that's all you need. You need one mistake on their part and you, you live. And you have a longer window to get that mistake because you just have more health from the yes and Y too. And you also get a bit of damage and armor. Ah! Whew. Thank God we had a bit of extra stats. <laughs> oh, 
All right. You don't want to be the person in the front anymore. Cause you, oh, someone did get a gem, it looks like, because you guys saw that. I'd be very careful about walking into all this. Oh my god, dude, you're scaring me. You're scaring me so much. And then you walk into the trees. Okay, let me bring you into the mind, mind of a techies player. An experienced techies player will not just put their minds, like, uh, in the lane. They'll put them in these trees. There was a guy in there. Who's got it? Okay, Kanka's got the gem. Unless Kanka, unless you've seen Kanka walk through an area and check, just assume there are mines there. So you were sitting, you are sitting at 700 health. This is like two mines worth of damage at this point in the game. Yeah, two mines. That's not a lot. So, I don't know. Where a common place to put mines for vision? Oh, near staircases maybe to set up traps. Oh, you know where it's good to put mines? In the trees, you know? Um... And then you just ran through all of it at low health. That's terrifying. Terrifying. You have to be so careful. That's how you lose the techies, is being uh, a little sloppy. Wow, lucked out. Regenerator, nice. Pinging the AM. I mean, how do you kill the AM? Look at your team's items. There's the issue. This is why you need the Abyssal and some of the other stuff. How does anyone start the kill on Anti-Mage? It's like so hard. And now he's strong because we fed him all those kills. Look at that. Three heroes, four heroes up here. Anti-Mage just blinks away. You guys have no way to do anything to him. We need that Abyssal. All right. Aegis number two. Probably give that cheese to SF. Yeah, okay. So same deal, but now last time we were up here about eight minutes ago, which means the chance for mines, very high. Techies Ags, almost here. Actually, perfect timing for Techies. You guys literally cannot do anything when he drops the sign with the Ags. It means you just never see into, into the mine. So now we repeat. Imagine that last time we came here and there was all these mines and all you needed was a sentry to kill it. Now you have a gem, but now it's not possible. And so this lane is now permanently defended. You guys just cannot go there. You have to go to a different lane. And you guys won't know that until you arrive. Right? There's no reason you guys get this high ground vision. Plus, Techies would just hold the sign until he sees you guys, like, right here. And then he drops the sign here. And now your push is dead. Or one of you are dead. And that doesn't feel very good. So now you guys are forced to go waste, like, a minute coming top and pushing. And don't forget, in that time, Anti-Mage was, like, split pushing. So now, okay, we got to deal with Anti-Mage, push it out. Push the other lane out. And now we're back, like, here, like... A minute and a half, two minutes later. And he just bought that time for you with the mine sign. That's why that first push was really important to get right. But here we are. Essentially, we're going to do the same thing. We need to push in, drop a sentry, be prepared to fortify a creep wave. Maybe not this one. That one's like almost dead. AM buying his team time, split pushing. You know why he can do this? Because he, he had the time to get strong. Before... 10 minutes ago, he wasn't that scary. Now, he's pretty scary because he has the Abyssal. He can solo kill a lot of you cores. Right? Pretty scary. Hey, you guys are still 12k up, but it's like way harder now. Hey, uh, speaking of which, all right, the push is dead. You guys can't go up. Without SF, you can't move up. Why wasn't SF here? Because anti mage was split pushing and someone had to try to deal with it. I feel like we could stop the replay already. Uh, missing that first opportunity was a big issue. But let's keep going for now and seeing. Uh, you're losing your base. You kind of need to go back, I think, man. Look at who's on your team. Anti mage can ignore everyone but you with SF dead. You, you kind of have to be involved with this. And you have nothing better to do because you can't push without, uh, without the SF. So getting an anti-mage kill would be huge. I think you need to go down there and try for it. For my All right, but if you reveal, he's not scared anymore. Any Okay, that farm didn't matter that much to you. I don't know if they saw that TP. There's a chance they do, especially with these illusions. But... At this state of the game, your location's really important. So giving away free information like this, like, oh, Weaver's in the bottom lane. What does it tell the team? Well, they already saw these guys down here. And if you're down here, 
No one is scared of this top half anymore. So who's here? Tiny. You could solo kill Tiny if you catch him out. You could solo kill this Hoodwink, I think. Probably Techies too. So they were scared to push out here. They see you bottom, they all come up here. Anti-Mage, he's not scared of these other three heroes. Now he's scared of you. Uh, so what's he do when he sees you in the lane? He's going to leave. Look at him. He's going to go farm this triangle. He's going to make his way mid to top. So when you TP down here, try to hide as long as you can and bait the AM to stay a little longer. Make him stay like 10 more seconds into being caught out by the Kunkka and the the uh, the chain sons of like Ogre and maybe you. you ah, it's a really tough kill actually, but maybe it happens. <clears throat> but it definitely won't happen if you like walk into the creep wave to get four creeps, right? Four creeps at this game doesn't like in this stage doesn't matter. A kill on anti mage is like everything. Don't get greedy. Let your supports get those last hits. They can push the lane perfectly fine like you can. Who has the gem? Who's in the front? That's all I'll say. I wonder if you just abyssal that guy. And then he dies, 1v5. Okay, he still died. Dude! <laughs> you can't just walk up here! Oh my god! You're terrifying me, dude! I know you have Aegis, but there's no reason to give the Aegis away for free. And certainly, there's no reason to give two lives for free. Whenever you walk up high ground against a techie, send one person. One sacrifice goes in. <clears throat> Does it, should it be the guy with the Aegis? Sure. But one person. You know what? You also don't even have to. If you had creeps, the creeps walk up, the gem reveals it. You don't have creeps because they're, they're getting cut. Your back door broke, though. What happened? Where'd your creep wave go? Oh, it got killed by mines. Uh, all right, this isn't happening. You can chip the tower a little bit, sure. Even though you have the gem, just to clarify, guys, for everyone watching, because I see this happen in my games, and it, like, it annoys me. Even if you have a gem, you can't see up high ground until you're there, in which case the mines can already be detonated and kill you. So you, even with the gem, even with sentries placed, you still can't blindly check up these things unless you're confident you're going to survive. Like you are BKB'd or your lifestealer who's going to rage up there and Jug who's going to spin up there and see safely that... He can do so after the spin ends. Just doing that. One thousand health is like three mines. Be very careful. Still no way to catch the AM. Right, no one's got an abyssal, no one's got a hex. Now look at this guy. He's dragging you guys around 1v5. I think we can stop here. This is an issue of itemization and missing your window at the the first ages attempt you guys kind of threw it there the next label, the next label the next label this attempt was happening when anti-mage couldn't do what he's doing he wasn't a threat on his own and he had a much harder time split pushing you guys like attempted push two 10 minutes later but anti-mage 10 minutes later totally different hero all the heroes in this game well not totally different but some of them specifically the techies and the anti-mage have changed the game. Anti-mage has scaled to a point where he's terrifying on his own. And Techies has made the game really difficult for you guys with mines. And having all the time to place them and prepare them. So missing that first window was a really big deal. Let's watch this go a little further. Um, but I don't think we really need to. I don't think you'll get a chance to come back from this. Skip forward. What's the state of the game? What's your itemization now? You finish the Mjolnir. Again, like, you fa you attack faster. That's cool. But, like, anti-mage. 65% extra magic resistance. Because um, he's level 30, he has that talent. 
So what's that put his total magic resistance at? 73. Right? So you kind of like double down on magic damage a bit more. What's his armor? Level 30? His armor is 38. Fairly good, but also not the highest in the world. Uh, there are a couple other heroes who like will also reach like really high armors like this. So, I mean, 38 is still a lot, but like, look, perfect example, right? Look at look at the stats. Physical resistance is 69%. Nice. Magic resistance is 73%. So, even without Adesso, physical resistance is what he's ever so slightly weaker to. But if you also then factor in the Deso and things like that, you reduce his physical resistance, and that is the way you're going to kill him, not the spells. So, uh, actually, I'm glad we skipped forward so we could see that. So, Anti-Mage, weak to physical damage. Highly consider the Deso against Anti-Mage. Let's stop there. I think that was the summary, guys. Uh -huh. So, we'll say it again, just to uh, clarify it. Itemization. I don't think you get the Maelstrom. I think you get the Deso. Um, Deso, SNY, BKB, Abyssal. Something like that. And that would give you the damage to kill Anti-Mage. The, the lockdown to kill Anti-Mage. It would give you the survivability to survive the Chain Stuns. To survive the Techies Mines. Um, itemization could have solved a lot of your issues. And I don't... Like, this doesn't really help you against Anti-Mage. Um... No stats. Yeah, it's got right-click damage, but it's not going to scale with his magic damage from Mjolnir. Um, BKB, that's fine. Uh, Lincolns, you kind of address Anti-Mage's Abyssal, but not all the other small chain stuns. And it doesn't, like, we have no lockdown here. We don't have that. We have, like, some stats, but also not the most in the world. We don't have the best physical right-click damage that we could have. No one else on our team. Oh, Phoenix eventually got a Hex. But a support Phoenix picking up Hex probably came real late. Um, and then, having said all that, it didn't actually matter because you guys were winning. You went up to the high ground, and then you guys kind of, like, choked the attempt a bit. And for you, the biggest mistake was accidentally walking in too far, dying out of position. Um, that kind of, like, screwed your team over. If Kunkka dies there, so, like, the way you guys played it, Kunkka dies there, you guys all back off. You wait for Kunkka, you still get a second attempt right there. Before the Anti-Mage comes online, before you can cut things and solo kill people, before Techies has time to set up all the mines again. You wait for Kunkka to respawn, you can try one more time with that Aegis, um, but not if you run into their base and die with the Aegis. So that's a bit of a downer on that side. Uh, so pushing, against, pushing high ground against Techies is kind of unique. Um, so I wouldn't expect you to, like, always know exactly what to do, but hopefully some of this explanation helped you understand, like, why it's important to get it right against the techies, because he can just keep blowing up creep waves if you give him the time to set up, which failing the first time does give him the time to do that. And then why the timing on anti-mage was so important to get right the first time, too. And I think that's it. I think this was okay, even though it was a core game. I think, uh, way to go, Zach! Um, but I think, I, I hope that was helpful. I think we did say some helpful stuff. I don't know. You guys let me know. Um, yeah, that's it. Laning phase real quick. Yeah, like, see, you were doing fine. So I think just uh, touching up in your itemization and game decisions could have... Uh, maybe that's too obvious, but, like, yeah, that's what it came down here. Itemizations and game decisions. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.